Greetings, this is Larry Stoll from Pace Turf. Today we're going to talk a little bit about measuring pH. In previous videos we've talked a little bit about pH and what it means, how it's a measure of concentration of hydrogen ions or hydronium ions as chemists would call them in solution. Uh, and today we want to talk about how you can um, get a little handle on those uh, measurements for yourself uh, at your site. One of the reasons that we're looking into this a little bit more, providing more information, is to, to help you adjust spray tank pH solutions to optimize the performance of your insecticides, fungicides, and herbicides, and to pre prevent what's known as alkaline hydrolysis of uh, fungicides, insecticides, and, and herbicides. Uh, one of the measurements that we'll talk about is uh, conducted with a paper strip that you dip into solution and it will change colors based on the pH of the solution that you dip it into. Uh, the other that we talked about a little bit previously is the uh, this is the Spectrum Technologies IQ 150 pH meter. It's a very nice uh, pH meter and the feature that's particularly interesting about it is it has this solid state probe and the important component of that solid state probe is that it uh, is not it's not that it's indestructible because it's not indestructible but it's very durable it's stored dry it doesn't require any particular solutions uh, to maintain it a standard pH electrode would have a, a reference electrode and a glass electrode that you would stick into solution there are some other ones that are a little bit better than that uh, but in in most cases those other types of electrodes the non-solid state ones uh, are more difficult to maintain this one is pretty easy. Uh, this is the only electrode or the only probe that I've seen so far that I would recommend for use on a golf course uh, for uh, monitoring spray tank solutions. This, this pH meter unfortunately is quite expensive uh, so it would pro probably be worth trying out some uh, pH papers to start with but uh, once you get used to uh, monitoring pH or altering the pH of your spray tank I think you're going to want a little bit more accurate measurement and you're going to want to use something like uh, a good pH meter that can uh, hold up for a number of years and uh, get a little bit more value out of those uh, pesticide applications that you're making. Let's take a look at uh, using the pH paper and the meter to see uh, how they work out for you. Well you can see the meter is reading a pH of 8.1 in the background. This is just tap water uh, in the San Diego area which is probably primarily Colorado River water right now and with the pH papers you can see you have different colors of uh, indication for pH. And we rip off about an inch and a half of the pH paper and just dip it right into the uh, into the water. If it was a spray tank water this would be before you add any products to it. And we'll compare the pH paper reading to the reading that we have on the pH meter. And uh, it's, you can see it's a little bit uh, awkward to handle. It's not too bad but uh, you can get a reading. It takes a little bit of uh, time to develop maybe 15-20 seconds to uh, get a pretty good reading. Uh, the paper reads about a pH of uh, 7.2 to 7.4 so it's reading a little bit lower than the uh, than the pH meter is reading which is a more accurate reading. So that just gives you an idea of how you would use the, uh, the pH papers to get an idea of the pH of the spray tank before you make any adjustments. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some uh, color indicator that's pH sensitive, uh, bromothymol blue, uh, to the water and then we're going to adjust the pH to see uh, how the changes take place. So this is the bromothymol blue. Uh, we're going to mix this up a little bit. Uh, we're starting out at a pH around 8, 8.1 and then we're going to uh, adjust the pH down using vinegar which is a, about a 4% uh, uh, acetic acid solution. Uh, so now we've got a good uh, good mix. You can see the blue color uh, of the water with the indicator in there, the pH being 8.2 uh, on the pH meter. And uh, the vinegar source we're going to use, we just picked up at, at Ralph's. It's just uh, white distilled white vinegar. Uh, as I mentioned, about 4% uh, acetic acid. And we're going to just drop that in with a pipette and we're going to measure the number of cc's or portions of cc's. It goes in at a tenth of a cc at a time and we add a few tenths of a cc uh, in and then we'll mix it up uh, again to uh, see how the pH changes with the vinegar. And you see it takes a second for the pH to change as the acetic acid neutralizes some of the bicarbonates uh, that are in the water and you can see the solution is turning into a yellow color as it comes down through pH of 7 
and then when we get uh, down to our target, uh, we'll have a pretty good idea of uh, how much vinegar we would need to add to our spray tank to pull the pH uh, down to about 6.5 or a little bit below uh, 6.5. And in this case, it took about uh, 0.8 cc's of vinegar to bring the pH down to uh, 6.3, which is good uh, target. When we stick the pH paper into the lower pH uh, water, you can see the indicator comes out at uh, about a 6.4, 6.5 reading. So the pH paper does pretty good measuring at the lower pHs. It was a little bit off on the higher end, but uh, the pH paper will work to give you a rough idea whether you're getting down to the pH you need to make those uh, pesticides more stable in the tank.